Okay guys, just going to go into a bit of our single leg stance progression, or really our split stance progression, because it's not a true single leg stance. So really all this starts from being able to have a solid half kneeling position. So when we take somebody down to half kneeling, uh, generally this is going to be for a stretch, like a half kneeling stretch to open up that, that rec fam, possibly so as iliacus, right about all, all that hip flexor complex. And sort of what we've done in the past is we've been really conscious on we have to stretch that hip flexor, stretch that hip flexor, so we've been cranking forward on it, right? And then the emphasis was, well, we're going to get that glute involved, so let's get some posterior tilt, bit of abs, right? Do a really hard stretch. And I still think there is a place for that. But what we really want to be careful of, um, especially when we start thinking about the prevalence of like FAI and any other degenerative changes in the hip that we're seeing, what I'm starting to be aware of is the position of this hip. So if I turn a bit more side on, what I'm really looking for here is the idea that we can get this femur sitting vertical in the acetabulum, right? So from here, it's kind of gonna look like that. Where often we see people do what I think is probably not ideal in this hip flexor stretch is cranking forward, right? And that might even feel like a bigger stretch. Right, but what's actually happening there is we're driving that femoral head into the acetabulum. And if we think about all the degenerative changes that we're seeing in the hip, they almost all occur in the anterior portion of that acetabulum or femur. When we look at FAI, we're getting that bony ossification in the acetabulum or on the femoral neck. So I really think it's important to maybe bring us back to that, that centrated joint position and give us that little buffer in there. So what I've been playing with myself and with clients is just poking into the anterior hip, push that hip back, and try to find that position where there, there's a lot less tension at the front of the anterior hip, and you almost feel that with your fingers just by palpating, right? From there, we can then drive that little bit of posterior tilt, right, to get more of a significant stretch, but still keeping that vertical femur and that centered femoral head. Um, if we really want to highlight this, what we do is we bring somebody into a much narrower stance, so almost in line, Right, and what will happen there is it's going to highlight their compensations. So if we take away that stability, where they're more likely to look for stability is with bony approximation. So dropping that femoral head into that, um, that acetabulum to try to give them some passive stability there. It's much like if we think of somebody starting off in a, in a basic plank hold. Right? We're trying to get them to resist extension. But what we often see is they'll drop into that lumbar spine because they're trying to hang on their vertebrae and right? just hang out with that bony approximation. Similar scenario here. We're saying, right, I haven't got that, that active stability, so I'm just going to crank forward and drop that femoral head into the acetabulum and find some stability there. So first thing is on, let's get people back into that hip and then look where they compensate. From there, they'll generally go into a bit of hip flexion. Let's bring them back up, back to that neutral position. Tuck that head back in. Keep that back toe under as well, just to drive some big toe dorsiflexion and ankle dorsiflexion. And then watch what's happening in the frontal plane. So I'll turn back to the, back to you there. Right. Check that they're not. You know, once we get them narrow, that they're not compensating by trying to find stability in that lateral hip. Or a sneaky one would be turning the foot across. Well, there's all these methods that people will find to work around the idea of. Um, having that center position because they just don't possess the active stability there. So this really carries over into our split squats and our lunges and all the bigger movements from there. So once somebody's got this position nailed, great. Let's take them through their split squat from the bottom up. So get their width now, sort of hip bone width apart. From here, vertical, yeah, we've got it. We're not cranking forward. Drive straight up into your split squat and be able to turn back under to drop back down. Right, and that will be our split squat pattern. Now, that's where I start people. I've got no problem with the idea of the knee driving forward over that ankle, but I like to teach somebody initially to be able to maintain that vertical shin. Right, so first I want them to be able to decelerate um, the load of their body coming forward. Right, know that they can engage that, that hamstring and that posterior chain of that front leg and be able to maintain that center femoral position. And we keep it very vertically, so it, very vertical, sorry. So it keeps very, it looks very robotic, right? And that's okay initially. After that, we can make it a bit more athletic and you know, shorten the stance, have a little bit of hip flexion, and I'm okay with this, okay? And we can start loading it up as well. 
And then that's going to carry over into our lunges. Um, actually, I'll come back a step. If people are really struggling with that vertical shin concept, what we can do is simply use a shin block. So a standard flat weight bench or a step set up like this. If we simply get that foot underneath, right, side shot camera, right, that's going to provide that shin block, give us that vertical tibia, tuck under, and just cue your client to drive up from there without touching the step. Right, tuck under, control, all the way up. Also in the bottom position, we like to cue the clients not to be bouncing off the ground. We want them to get full range. So on a surface like this where we've got the, uh, we've got the artificial grass in, simple cue I give them is I want their knee to touch the grass, but not the floor. So they guide it down, just gently into that bottom position and all the way out. Right? Once I've got that, then we can either load that pattern up, we could add a deficit to it to add some range of motion, so raising the front foot, um, or we can make it dynamic. So the next progression from there is generally going to be a reverse lunge. Right? So we just cue the clients that a reverse lunge is simply stepping backwards into that split squat. Right? It's the same movement. So reverse lunge. Right, so I'm still trying to maintain that vertical femur, femur on the way down, not crank forward. Still control it to where I barely touch the ground. Um, but then once I hit that bottom position, we're just using that front foot to drag us up. So again, rather than letting clients lean forward and try to really quad their way up, pushing to the ball of the foot, I cue them to imagine that they're actually trying to use this front foot to drag the ground back towards them, to engage more of that hamstring and glute on that front leg. So, right from here, land, control into that stretch, accelerate up through that front leg. And then again, we can, there's a lot of ways we can load up that reverse lunge. We can do stand away, holding dumbbells or kettlebells. We can go offset, right? So putting the load onto that opposite side, right? That's going to um, pull us into more of an internal rotation moment on that front leg. We have to resist that. So in turn, we're going to get more activation from those external rotators, the glutes and whatnot. Okay, once I've mastered that reverse lunge, um, and by the way, the reason we go to reverse lunge first is because it uses the least, uh, or it um, necessitates the least need for deceleration. So it can be especially beneficial for people who suffer from any sort of anterior knee pain. Um, so we compare that to one of our forward lunge variations. We have the whole body weight going forward. Right? And that becomes a lot more force that the knee has to deal with to then push back up. Now this could be great for some advanced people once they've gone through those progressions, but some people with knee pain, we, we might have any need to ever go there. So if you look at our reverse lunge, there's really no deceleration needed on that front knee. You can see it pretty much stays still in, in space and it's more of a, more of a hinge. Um, so from there, a couple of options. As I said, if we're looking for more of that athletic movement, we can go to our forward lunge, right? Again, same principle, that back leg, I'll show you this side, we want that centered femoral head, right? Or at least we don't want to be cranking forward on it this way. Once we start getting to that level where we're at the forward lunges, I'm okay with a little bit of trunk lean, right? This movement, okay? Right, for a couple of reasons. One, that's still going to protect um, that femoral head. When we sit back in some hip flexion, that femur is going to sit back in that acetabulum and we're not going to have that same um, bone on bone situation. But not just that, this is, this is a more athletic position. Right? Anyone in sports or athletics, this is where the position they're going to be in when they're running. Right? This is an acceleration position. They're not going to start running from here. So I'm okay with this position here. And then we can load that up however we need to as well. The last one from this series will be the rear foot elevators for squat. Now, rear foot elevated, it, it definitely sits further along the continuum than the standard split squat because it's more range of motion, but it's sort of separate to our reverse or our forward lunges. Right? With our reverse and our forward lunges, there's more of a, um, a stability component. It's more about being a dynamic movement. Our rear foot elevated split squat, it's still a static motion, right? So it's still a split squat, not a lunge, right? So, the only issue here is more of a mobility scenario. Now this is probably a little bit low for me, but we can still set it up. So what we have here is, now we're adding that knee, uh, greater knee flexion on that rear leg. 
So that's going to bring that rectus rec rec femoris muscle into play a lot more, being that it's a two joint muscle. Right, it crosses the knee, crosses the hip. If you don't have the requisite length there, you're going to compensate somewhere. And what we tend to see is people will be way out here, right, because they can't get that full knee flexion because rec femoris is just too tight, and they'll compensate with this extension pattern, right, because they need to drop into that anterior too. We're going to pull the rec femoris from this end. And needs to give up some length at this end. We go into that anterior pelvic tilt, lumbar extension, and our rear foot elevator split squat looks like this. So either we need to cue them out of that, drive some posterior tilt, get that vertical femur, and drive out, get vertical shin, drive out from this position. Okay? If they can't do that, we need to reduce the height, right? So it's less of a stretch from the knee end of rec fem. Um, so rear uh, foot elevated split squats, they're going to be more challenging from the standpoint of it's greater range of motion, or they, they burn like hell, they're not comfortable, nobody likes them, but there is less of a stability issue. So they probably lend themselves better to some pretty heavy loading. Um, I certainly like to use the goblet position for as long as we can. Right, we can get some pretty big dumbbells here, that's going to help to engage that anterior core, help get them in that nice upright posture. Right, but we, what we really want to avoid is taking people into this extended position. Right? So probably the key thing from all this is simply, if we were to take a still shot in the bottom position of most of these movements, especially the first couple, we wouldn't know whether this here is just a half kneeling stretch, hip flexor stretch, or is this reverse lunge, or is this a, or, or a split squat before that, or it could even be a forward lunge, or the forward lunge we might add that slight trunk lean. It should all look like the same position. Um, so that's really it. So just keep that in mind when you're going through your, your progressions from the half kneeling position, through your split squats, through your lunges. Um, and also just being aware with what we're seeing with hip conditions, such as FAI. Um, maybe just have a play around with being focused on coaching that, that vertical femoral position, not letting that femoral head slide forward to the acetabulum. Um, so here you go with it.